Hello, this is Justin Patton. Welcome back to the Auburn University RFID Lab uh, end of summer update. So, um, several things. Graduation for the university is next week, so the RFID Lab has been asked to help support that. Um, this is going to be uh, a pandemic graduation in the sense that we're not going to have the traditional walk across the stage and shake hands and hand the diploma. Um, so RFID is a big part of this in helping make this uh, more of a no touch and a distance process. So what they're going to have is the stage set up where the students can go across the stage and they're going to have a RFID tag on their graduation invitation. Uh, they can wave it in front of the antenna and their name and photo will show up on the uh, Jumbotron so you can get your picture taken on the big screen in uh, Auburn University Stadium if you're graduating this year. So looking forward to that. It's our first time really kind of supporting an event or something like that. Hope it goes well and we'll let you know in the future um, um, how uh, RFID work to uh, help hopefully make graduation go smoothly in the midst of uh, all of this uh, uh, pandemic. Updates on a few fronts. I want to start with commercial aviation. Commercial aviation um, is really kind of coming back up and focusing on an innovation mode. So we've done several projects with in cabin. Um, clearly in the future, a lot of things are going to change in our daily lives. I think part of that is uh, happening in the aircraft and the flights you go on now. Um, we're really focusing as an industry on low touch, no touch. How can we get better inventory control? How can we uh, get better handle on what is going on to the aircraft or what is going uh, to be given to the passengers without trying to handle a lot of things and trying to prevent some exposure and so on and so forth. So lots of activity on that front. Good to news. Uh, great to get uh, some more activity from our commercial aviation partners uh, who've been hit pretty hard in these last few months from uh, all of the, the pandemic and shutdown. More to come on that front. Uh, a few updates on papers and reports. The BOPUS paper is nearing completion and actually we've put together a BOPUS scorecard. It's a very simple, short three-page document where we can score how various retailers are uh, performing in their BOPUS uh, programs as compared to their peer partners or the industry averages. So it takes into account things like um, how many items are available for a buy online pickup in store experience from that retailer's website? Uh, what's the average amount of time it takes for that product to be ready in the store? Where do they go to the store to get it? Do they have dedicated parking? Do they have a dedicated experience? How many clicks does it take to get through this process? You know, does the inventory match what's on the, on the floor, on the website, all that stuff. So that BOPUS scorecard is available. If you're an a retailer and you're interested, contact me. I'll be happy to uh, uh, help set up a team to go out there and do a quick check on your own programs and you can benchmark yourself against how other retailers are doing. And the report on how the industry as a whole is doing is coming uh, very shortly where we're finalizing that draft document. Another thing that's happening on that front, and this has also been uh, uh, heavily impacted by uh, the pandemic, is uh, uh, inventory accuracy and data quality coming into stores. Um, clearly, there's been a significant impact on a lot of different retailers uh, based on the amount of product is being shipped and received to the stores. Everything shut down for a while. There was kind of a bullwhip effect when you had product that had backed up in DCs that was now flushing back through to the stores. Um, we have different channels and different avenues of pushing that product to consumers right now. So all of that stuff is uh, uh, leading to a scenario where inventory accuracy is much more important coming into the stores in the supply chain than it was in the past. It's always been important, but right now we cannot afford a lot of errors or inaccuracies in what's in the boxes uh, so that we can make sure that we can actually get it on through to the consumers, especially through new channels like ship to home or, or buy online, pick up in store. So the CHIP project that's really focusing on that data exchange, um, that program is progressing. Uh, we've, again, like I said before, we have several partners who are added to that now. We're really, really hammering down on data quality. So how do we capture the data in the DC on the brand side? How do we capture the data in the DC on the retailer side at the serialized item level and exchange that? Um, we are fleshing those programs out it's deeper than what we have looked at in the past. It's complex, so it's taking some time. And anytime you mess with distribution center operations, that always takes a minute. Um, but uh, lots of progress on that front. Again, if you're very interested in validating your shipments and receipts at an item level or in each level, let us know and we can kind of help talk to you about those programs. 
Um, the DART program is going forward. DART is the program where we're looking at uh, consumer shopping experience and consumer shopping behavior. Um, it's quantifying all the decision points that a consumer makes when they go in the store. And then we are looking at how those decisions change when you layer in new technology. So adding in, for example, robotic shopping assistants or magic dressing rooms or um, any of the new showrooming uh, you know, examples that we've seen in the past. You'll hear dark stores talked about a lot in the news right now, which are stores that consumers can't go in, but they're still shipping a fulfilling product. Uh, we're looking at hybrid models in the future for a traditional store and a dark store and how those combine to create a much more efficient store solution that will serve both of those channels. So that DART program is working to quantify that. A lot of progress, um, some good outcomes. You can see some complete store redesign models that are coming out of that program soon. Um, so if, again, if you're interested, let us know. We'll have, happy to talk to you about it. ARC program, a few updates. Uh, the ARC program has expanded a lot. So traditionally, ARC has been uh, much more heavily on retail. You know, we added some components to the ARC program last year for aviation, uh, for um, commercial and defense aviation. Uh, this year, we're, we're broadening out into several more horizons. Um, you will see some announcements in the next month or so about a few new industries that the ARC program is moving into. So it's really rapidly gaining speed and broadening. Um, so more to come on the ARC program soon. Some exciting announcements. Uh, uh, probably next uh, uh, monthly update, I'll talk to you about specifically what those are. Robotics. Uh, the robot team back there, the automation team, um, has continued to kind of approve some stuff. We're doing some field trials right now on some automation solutions. They're tying together computer vision and uh, um, RFID, um, seeing some interesting results. Not ready to share with prime time, but uh, uh, more to come as the, as the semester gets underway. Um, space supply chain in NASA. Again, um, continuing that relationship, we're really looking at the, um, um, the, the lab build right now and uh, some of the projects that we can to potentially work with in common, especially phase localization. Uh, more to come on that front soon as well. Um, probably by the end of the year, we should have something a little bit more concrete, inked and dried on, on what's happening there. And then finally, one of the things that was of high interest, especially after the last board meeting, was the industry playbook. The industry playbook, if you'll remember, is uh, this is a retail project. This is going back to uh, the, the supplier tagging requirements that several different retailers are pushing out there. Um, so we're taking those documents from individual retailers, we combine them into one combined industry playbook. That industry playbook is a, is a collection, uh, it's a short you know, four or five page document of best practices for where to put a tag, how to put a tag on there, how to encode it, what kind of data serialization, how do I check to make sure that I've done it properly, all of the things that a supplier would need to know to source tag properly to send product onto the retailer. It's valuable for suppliers to make sure that they're getting the same requirements across the board from the retailers. <clears throat> and we've also found it's very valuable to uh, new retailers because that helps them understand what they should be asking of their suppliers when they start their programs and kind of trying to align that among partners. So uh, great news on that front as well. And then finally, um, in terms of industry events, I know I mentioned in our last update there was going to be an industry event called Retail Supply Chain USA at the end of July. They actually moved that to August uh, 20th to the 21st. Um, so um, we will be speaking at that event about the uh, uh, chip project and the blockchain project. So you can come see us at, uh, I think it's at a virtual event. You can come see us on that virtual event. Uh, with that, um, lots of exciting times. You know, beginning of the semester is always a new time. Uh, we have some students that go out and graduate, move into the industry. We've got some students that are joining the team now. So a uh, whole new team, whole new programs, and look forward to seeing you all next month. Thank you.